Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me, I have an Acura and the customer complaint is that they are complaining of the temperature running hotter and he previously told me that uh, he had filled it up with water and they had never gotten the coolant flushed. Uh, so I don't know what the exact mixture inside the radiator or the engine was, but I can tell you it wasn't 50-50 with the antifreeze and with the water. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cooling system and let me show you guys what I found on this. We're looking at the engine bay and just like the customer had told me that uh, he had water inside of the cooling system guys due to a leak. Now that's not the worst thing that you could do to an engine, especially if it's summertime. If you have a leak and you pour some water in there until you're able to get it into a shop or be able to rectify the issue, it's totally fine. But the problem comes in when you leave that water in there for too long and you throw off your coolant balance. Uh, normally it's supposed to be a 50-50, 50% water, 50% coolant and that mixture right there will work out pretty good and it won't cause corrosion or anything inside your engine. Now in this scenario, I'm assuming this car had a 50-50 mix to begin with, had a leak, customer poured water in it, and they never rectified the issue afterwards. They uh, completely forgot to flush out the coolant and they left more water in there. So let's say the mixture went up to about a 70% water and 30% coolant mix. And the climate that we live in here in Illinois, that's not a good thing. Uh, it's more susceptible to rusting and freezing over. Now this car hasn't really frozen over or anything like that and we are approaching our summer months now. But the issue is that I do believe there is something insulating the engine and I believe this engine may have some rust forming on the inside. Now the way I kind of based my diagnosis on this is quite simple. I turned the car on and I let it run for about an hour. I made sure that my cooling system got up to temperature and everything was running good and hot. And once I achieved that, I went ahead and I took this tool. Now this is a FLIR camera guys. What this does is it does infrared imaging. And the way this works is you guys can see everything right now is in blue. That is because I have had the car inside my stall not running for about eight hours now. So this thing is completely cooled off. But the way this works is if I put my hand in front of it, you guys can see it'll measure heat. Now what I did when the engine was nice and hot, I came all around my engine bay and I just kind of scanned around the engine, radiator, my radiator hoses, you know, pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Now when an engine is cold, normally one hose will be cooler than the other and vice versa. And typical cooling systems will have, let's say 200 on the inlet hose and let's say 295 on the outlet hose. You'll have a differential of temperature based on, uh, you know, the thermostat opening and closing and how often it's cycling through. But in this car, one thing that I noticed, even after the radiator, you know, cooled down the coolant, the fan shut off, and I was measuring the temperature, the temperature stayed pretty consistent on both sides of the system, guys. Pre-thermostat, it was sticking at one temperature, and after the thermostat, it wasn't that far off. I mean, very minuscule numbers here. Uh, it wasn't even double-digit numbers. Let's say uh, going into the radiator, the coolant temperature was uh, 200 going out of it it was like 190 it would creep to like 195 and it was just basically too too close to call they should have a little bit of a wider spread there and that kind of made me think something is clogging up the system maybe a radiator clog or something like that and necessarily i don't think that's what's going on here because it was pretty consistent and even all the way around now i had to do a visual inspection because i can't just rely on me looking at a FLIR gauge and you know just seeing the temperature differential so to confirm my theory I came here and I went ahead and I removed my radiator cap and to much to my surprise if you guys see what I see here is that looks like uh, like well let's say like crap to say the least that is rust inside of the radiator cap now it doesn't really get any better from here guys when we go ahead and shine a light down here and let me see if I can zoom you guys in, see if I can get a good angle of this. You guys will notice that there is a lot of uh, coloration in there and a lot of muck. And the coolant is kind of orange. Now, just for reference, GM uses a orange coolant. This is not a GM product, guys. This is a Honda Acura product. This coolant should be uh, you know, kind of yellowish, if not blue. Now, this one is a 2002. This is prior to them using their blue-colored coolant. But this stuff should not be orange. What you guys are looking at is actual rust that's inside of the system. Now, what I believe happened on this car is 
when we had that inaccurate mix where the customer put in water and forgot to flush it out with proper coolant levels and everything, uh, he left the water in there, and I think that water started damaging the engine internally, uh, mainly the cooling side. It probably formed a little bit of a layer of rust. Now, there's no way for me to tell how bad this damage is. Uh, the car is not overheating. The car is not running rough or anything. Everything seems to be in order. We just have a lot of buildup in our cooling system. So what I'm going to be doing today in this video, guys, is I'm going to show you guys how to basically clean out your cooling system. Now, this is not going to be as easy as draining it and flushing it out with water and rinsing it out. I do see a lot of heavy deposits here. So we will be using a certain product. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys what this product is. I'm going to kind of just block it off with my hand here. And this is what we're going to be using. Now, this product, the way it works is it requires you to drain the cooling system. And once you drain the cooling system, you're supposed to fill it up with water. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it up with our system cleaner. And it says if you want to do a minimum of uh, basic cleaning, you got to run the engine with the water and solution mixture for 10 minutes. But if you want maximum cleaning, you got to run your engine three to six hours. So this is not something that's going to get done in one day. This is going to take multiple days because I'm planning on flushing this system out twice. I'm going to drain the coolant and I'll show you guys how to do that part and you guys can see how disgusting it is. And after we do that, we're going to fill it up with some water, add our solution in here. And then we got to run the car for about six hours. And after we run that, we're going to let it cool down. We're going to flush it out again, get all that nasty stuff out of there. And then we're going to fill it up with some more water and some more cleaner and just repeat the cycle again. So let me go ahead and get this car up in the air and let's start draining the system. Now we are up and underneath the car, guys. We are looking in front. We're at the bottom of the radiator. Now this system, like I mentioned, has a lot of uh, particulate in it. Normally, I would drain my system using this little valve here. The way this works is you just kind of take it off and it starts, you know, dripping the water out. Now, in this scenario, what I'm actually going to have to do is disconnect the lower hose because I need to get out any of those contaminants. If you guys look at the opening on this, that's about a two inch opening versus this opening up here. As you can see, that's only like a five millimeter hole guys so I'm not gonna be able to get any sort of dirt or debris out from that end so we're gonna go ahead and attack the lower hose here I'm gonna go get my drain and everything set up so we can go ahead and remove that so we are all set up we got our drain pan underneath and we are ready to remove the lower radiator hose one thing I do want to make note this car has had a recent radiator replacement guys I believe after the customer realized what had happened uh, he did have a radiator leak and that was the issue. They went ahead and replaced the radiator and it looks like they never did anything for the resulting rust. So this radiator is fairly new. Now normally you would have a spring clamp up here. In this case they don't. They have a worm gear clamp. Makes it a lot easier to remove. These are normally 8 millimeters, And you just want to go ahead and loosen it up. And what I'm going to do is kind of break free the connection there and just kind of push my clamp up. Now this can get really messy. I don't know how well, uh, or I'll be honest with you, I don't really want to get this stuff on me, so I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this, because I'm going to have to kind of duck and run real quick here. Uh, let me get everything set up, and hopefully I don't splash you guys. Now, I'm not going to be underneath this thing when this thing comes going. I'm going to grab me a pry bar, so I can at least use a pry bar to kind of wedge it open here. And I don't know if you guys can see me, I'm right here. Using a pry bar, I'm going to keep a little bit of distance, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this lower hose. Now, you got to be careful here. Don't break your hose. And you guys can see this stuff is pretty yellow. Let me see if I can just get my setup a little higher here. Give me a second, guys. I'm sorry. This is uh, really nasty stuff. I really don't want to get any of it on me. And it's coming out under some pressure here, too. baby open up there we go so I was able to slide our hose off guys and as you guys can see she is making a mess I am getting this coolant leaking out of everywhere and you guys can see this particular coolant is almost yellow in color you can see we do have a fair amount of rust now from down here it doesn't look as horrible as it did from the top honestly I was expecting this stuff to be more orangey this stuff is pretty yellow in color so it's not horrible. We may just have a little bit of rusting going on here and not a whole lot. But that top side really makes it look like it's really horrible.
All right, guys, so my radiator and my engine block have drained out. Now, it's impossible to get every little bit of coolant out, but you want to do your best, try to drain as much as you can. So what I'm going to do, and it's kind of just, you know, added steps here, uh, just something I'm choosing to do is, since this radiator is fairly new, I went ahead and I checked here in the top cap area, took a little bit of water, and I put or poured it in there, and it actually cleaned up pretty good. So to try to flush out any big debris through my radiator before I hook up the lower hose and run my water and my cleaner in there, I want to try to remove as many big debris dirt particles as I can. So I'm going to take my garden hose now. I'm not using any filtered water or anything here, guys. It's just a regular you know, water hose, garden hose, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it on the top of my radiator neck here. And I'm going to go ahead and fill up my radiator with water. Now, keep in mind down below, my radiator is not connected to my engine. The hose has been disconnected. And the purpose of me doing this is I'm trying to get any sort of contaminants out. I'm going to be flushing any sort of rust particles downward from the radiator. Uh, so that way I can try to get the maximum amount of dirt out. Uh, now that I went ahead and I did that, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. I'm going to let all of that drain out of the radiator. And once we have that done, I'm going to go ahead underneath the car. I'm going to reconnect our lower radiator hose. And then I'll bring you guys back in when it's time to refill it and add our system cleaner in here. I went ahead and I got my lower hose reattached, guys. And my radiator completely drained out. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my system funnel here. Uh, you guys have seen me use this before in a lot of my cooling uh, bleeding videos. I'm not going to show you how to use it in this instance. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you the process that we're currently in route to. So you don't necessarily need this, but I just like using it because I'm going to treat this like I'm actually doing a coolant fill on this car. I'm going to actually bleed out all the air because this thing is going to require me to run the engine with the cleaner in there for three to six hours, depending on how many hours I want to get involved in with this. Now, I'm going to try to do the six hours of runtime. A uh, customer is aware that that is going to take a while. The way I anticipate on doing it is, you know, every uh, hour or so, run the car, let it cool down for 30 minutes, and then run it again and try to do a couple hours a day. So it may take about two days for me to fully do this process, guys. So you may see me in uh, different lights here, and you may see me wearing different clothes. That's why. Uh, just kind of give you guys a heads up. So now that I got my funnel on there, I'm going to go ahead and take our product that we're going to be using and I'm going to open it up and make sure to shake your bottle very very well because if you don't you may not be getting all the cleaner in there correctly so let's go ahead and take our cleaner and we're going to go ahead and pour it in now if you guys can see this stuff is pretty clear it almost looks like water and I will say I have never really used this particular product before or any sort of cleaner inside of a radiator system normally what I've always done is just kind of you know empty them uh, fill them up with water run them for a minute or two and then get all that water out and refill them with coolant that's usually the farthest extent i've gone they have had uh, some additives and stuff that you could put into coolant i used to do that when i used to work at a dealer but they never had anything like this where you can actually clean the inside of the engine so this is completely new to me guys uh, as much as it's new to you so now i'm going to take our garden hose and i'm going to go ahead and fill up my radiator funnel and just try to get as much water as I can in here. Now, hopefully you guys don't, you know, argue the fact that I'm using tap water. Um, I know you're supposed to use distilled water inside of the radiator systems. I read the directions on this product. It just says fill it up with water. It doesn't really specify tap water or distilled water. Since I don't have distilled water and I'm not going to be running out to the store to get any, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with what I have here, which is going to be tap water uh, from my garden hose uh, so now that I dumped the cleaner first in there I'm just gonna go ahead and top everything off with the water once I top this off with the water I'm gonna basically be bleeding the system out guys you've seen me bleed out cooling systems before if you don't know what what that is like I do have a video go ahead and check it out it'll be on my channel um, so I'll come back with you guys once I have this filled up and all bled out just wanted to show you guys I'm in the process of pretty much bleeding the air out and you can see this fluid that was basically just water and the cleaner that were both clear it's starting to have some discoloration 
all of the rust that is coming out uh, of the engine is pretty much bubbling up here. Now that's a good thing for us because usually when you bleed a cooling system, the highest point is where all the air bubbles and everything come up. And these air bubbles are actually trapping some of that rust and dirt. Uh, let me zoom you a little bit in here and I don't know how well it can pick it up. You can kind of see there's some little chunks of stuff coming out of there. Uh, this stuff is tending to foam up kind of like soap. You can see it's kind of frothy, but you can clearly see little things like that that are also coming up with the air bubbles. I just wanted to share that with you guys so you kind of have an idea of what to look for when you're doing it. Now, this car still has quite a bit left to get the air out. I just started the bleeding procedure. One thing that I should mention to you guys, when you do this flush, whether you decide to bleed the system or not, make sure that you have your heater on because you want to have your car in the heat mode setting at the highest so your heater core can also be in circuit. If you have it on AC mode, your heater core will be blocked off and you're not going to be cleaning out your heater core. And we definitely do want to clean anything and everything that's inside of this system, including the heater core, to try to get out as much of the rust and dirt as we can. While my engine is still basically bleeding out and purging the air, guys, I went ahead and I removed my reservoir. Now, the reservoir tells me a really good story of what's going on in this engine. Now, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up, but you guys can see in there, uh, I want to say right about there, you see it kind of looks like there's some clay buildup in there. And there is a little bit of water. And what I did was I just kind of shook it just to kind of see what would happen. And the more I shake it, the more of a clay mixture. You can see it kind of cleaned it up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys over to my oil drain and we're going to pour this out. And let's see what kind of nastiness we get out of it. So instead of my oil drain guys, I actually have a cup and I went ahead and I just swirled, you know, whatever I have in here and I put a little bit of water and let's see what comes out, what color it is. You guys can see that that stuff's pretty nasty. It's coming out pretty clumpy. Uh, I'm just going to kind of shake it out. Now we will be cleaning this bottle guys, but most of the sediment will be in here and it's pretty clear. You guys can see. That stuff is really nasty and orange. Now, I don't see really a lot of debris in there. It's more like fine rust and kind of like sand in a way. So we're definitely going to clean up this bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of more cleaner in this bottle. So as the engine runs, what it'll do is it'll kind of take more cleaner back and forth. And hopefully the engine will deposit more of the sediment in here. I just wanted to mention this because I wanted to take this off and clean it and I saw how nasty it was. So I just wanted to show you guys. So make sure you clean your reservoir as well because this is a part of the cooling system. So I went ahead and I got my cooling system bled out guys. just kind of want to show you what's in here. Uh, it's pretty nasty. It's hard for you guys to see. But let me see if I could get you guys angled in here. And you guys can see it's starting to look orange and rustic again. Now there's a little bit of cleaner and water in here. I had to bleed out the air just to make sure that my car wouldn't overheat. We are going to be running this for quite a few hours. I just wanted to show you guys the end result. This is what floated up to the top. As you guys can see it's pretty nasty. Now that we got everything bled out guys and we cleaned as much of the system as we could to try to give this car the best chance. Uh, we're just letting it run. Now, I'm only going to make this portion of this clip showing you that the car is running. But basically, after this point, right now, the car's been on for about an hour. It looks like I'm going to be running it for about another five or six hours. I'm going to try to get the maximum time on the center and try to clear out as much as I could. And then I'm going to be repeating the process again. And after I complete my hours on this flush, I'm going to do the same thing. Lower uh, radiator hose has to come off. I'll flush it out with water just like you previously saw me do and then I'm gonna tighten it back up and fill it up with water and another round of cleaner and also run it for a couple more hours and then drain it out now once I complete all those steps and like I said previously guys this is gonna take a couple days for me to do just because of the time required for this engine to run I don't want to just leave the car running outside I want to be able to monitor it so I will be taking my time doing this so you'll see a lot of differences going on in the shop don't be surprised. Don't think that uh, it got done really quick. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I've gotten about four hours on the first flush for this car. 
and I wasn't really going to film me draining it out but I figured you guys will want to see what we're getting out of here on the first drain so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove this lower radiator hose now and we're going to drain it out on camera and we're gonna see all the soot that is coming out of this engine so let's see what we get oh wow look at that so as you guys can see we're getting a good amount of stuff out here and it's fairly orange in color so this stuff is working we are getting a majority of the rust out guys look at that nastiness so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna let this thing drain out once it drains out i'm gonna flush out the engine with some water and try to get a majority of it out and once I do that, I'm going to fill it back up and run it a little bit longer with the cleaner in there, a couple more hours. And then I'll bring you guys back and we'll see what is going to be the end result. All right, guys. So we have done our secondary flush. It has ran for a few more hours and we are ready to get all of the stuff out of here. Now, I just cut the car off maybe about 10 minutes ago. So this fluid is still pretty warm. And the reason why I want to try to drain it when it's warm is to try to get out any sediment while it's basically floating inside the coolant. Uh, the car hasn't been off for more than five or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna be very careful when I drain this. What I'm gonna do is grab my pry bar, which you guys can see now, and I'm gonna just, you know, pry it very far away from the radiator so that way I don't get burned. Uh, this stuff will burn you guys. It's, it's really, really hot. Now, I don't suggest you guys do this. I have uh, a lot of years of experience. As you guys saw, it kind of came at me right there, but it didn't quite get me. Uh, and you guys can see, it's still pretty nasty, but we're actually gonna be flushing it out with water and we're gonna be getting on most of the stuff. I just wanted to get out a majority of the rust using the chemical cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is let this thing drain out and then we're gonna fill it up with some water and we're gonna cycle all the water out until it's nice and clean. All right, guys, so we have completed both of our flushes with our cleaning solution, and that consisted of draining the coolant, filling the system up with the cleaner and with water, running it for a couple hours, and we did that two times. And now we have finally drained out the system so there's no more cleaner inside the engine or anything left over. We went ahead and we drained everything out. We went ahead and we flushed everything out with water, and the way that I did that, guys, was I filled up my radiator, with water pure water uh, let it cycle one time and then i emptied it out then i took water uh, through my hoses i disconnected my upper hose and my lower hose and i basically pushed water through it on um, both sides now i did go a little bit above and beyond and also removed the thermostat and i also removed my heater core lines from the engine i disconnected those and i also flushed out my heater core now in this situation, I'm not going to be showing all that because the whole point of this video is to show you guys how to clean out a cooling system. And it's not really specific towards one type of car. It's a universal application. But after you run your cleaner, make sure you disconnect uh, whatever you need to disconnect to flush out like your heater core and whatever it is that you're going to be disconnecting. In this case, I flushed out my heater core. I disconnected my radiator from my engine and I flushed out my radiator separately. And then I removed my thermostat and ran water through the engine for about 10-15 minutes until the water came out clear and I did that to all three of these components. Now that we're back guys this car has been running for a little bit of time I almost got all of the air bled out of the system but one thing that I did want to show you guys if you remember before when we looked in here it was coming up orange and the coolant was very dirty well after our flush if you look at everything it's still nice and clean. This car has been running for about 15, 20 minutes now, and I don't see any more orange coming out. So it looks like we did a successful cleaning of our cooling system. All right, guys, so we have basically completed our flush for our system. Now, if you guys recall in the beginning of the video, this coolant was nasty and orangey and had a lot of rust scale in it. After we did two flushes, we were able to clean it out using a chemical cleaner. And after the chemical cleaner, I did one more flush just using water. And we got every single little bit of rust out. 
Now, it's hard to get everything out, guys, but we did a lot. I mean, this thing blew out a lot of rust. You guys saw every time I drained the radiator, it was just getting more and more copper and rustic in color. And we got it to the point where I flushed it out so many times that it started coming out clear. By the time I was done, I just rinsed it out with water, which unfortunately I didn't have time to film when I drained the radiator. Uh, it was pretty much just very, very slightly murky, meaning it was clear just with a little bit of haze. And then after I ran the water through the engine and through the radiator and the heater core, it went from hazy to nice and clear. So I know I got every single little bit that I cut out. Uh, there's nothing else that you can really do at this point. I mean, realistically, getting about 90% of the junk out of there is better than nothing. So I went ahead and I tested my car afterwards. Our temperature scale on it is actually lower than what it was before. Now that we don't have like a nice little rust jacket building up the coolant heat in there and not letting it escape. So all in all, this thing turned out wonderfully. I just showed you guys in the end that we have nice and clear coolant. And, you know, I'm very happy with the way this thing turned out. Now, not every car on the road is going to be kind of like this, guys. This is like one off an exception. I have not seen anything this bad in years. Uh, typically, if you have an older car, you do run into this if people haven't been maintaining it. In this case scenario, it just wasn't lack of maintenance. It was someone going in there and doing something wrong that just kind of exacerbated the situation and made it worse. But, you know, we were able to at least rectify it and get it cleaned out. So that's a major plus. So... For your cars out there, if you're planning on doing this, if you don't have as much buildup like this one does, typically you'll flush it out once, rinse some water through your engine, go ahead and fill it up, and usually you're good to go. This one, I had to go a little bit extreme. I currently have about three days of work on this thing just between flushing it and things like that. Now, most shops are not going to do this, guys. I will give you a heads up. This is more of a DIY type thing because no mechanic is going to flush it and go through these painstaking steps. Not that it's difficult, but in a shop environment, this just isn't going to pay very well. Fortunately for this customer, I know him very well, and he actually has a lot of time on his hands. He's like, you can have the car for as long as you need. Therefore, you know, I saw it working out for me, but typically I would not do this on my customer cars. I wouldn't take this off the street and say, go ahead, bring it in, let me do it. It was just the right conditions, and I really wanted to make this video, so I took it in as a project, and, you know, we got it done, and I'm very happy the way it turned out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully you guys can take some of this information and use it towards your car or whatever it is that you're going to be doing this to. And you know, hopefully it does help you out and takes the guesswork out of it for you guys. So with that said, please comment, like, and subscribe. It will definitely help my channel grow. And like always, guys, I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you guys on the next repair.